Hello everyone. Uh, I just want to share my my my, my, my excitement to understand uh, this very hard to understand topic about perfection and sinlessness in Bible and LGY writings. But before this, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you for the truth in the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. Help us to understand in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. So, <clears throat> it has always been a debate in uh, theological circles. Uh, the, my theologian friends always like to say that this is a debate in the classroom. And uh, there are many papers about it. And there seems to be a lot of uh, pressure and confusion. And, uh, <laughs> and controversies regarding perfection. Uh, in relation to that, the, uh, the, the other debate that they are talking about is uh, about the uh, nature of Jesus Christ, whether Jesus had pre-fall nature or post-fall nature. I think that is in relation to the possibility of, have, of being perfect or sinless because uh, some people want to think that Jesus had an advantage uh, that he had uh, pre-fall nature since uh, Ellen White also says nature before the fullness of nature before of the unfallen human, humanity. So uh, th those are the, the issues. Now it just took me quite a uh, long, long time. But I suspected that in any debate, we have to define uh, terms. And the, that one of the things I observe in these discussions and write-ups and sermons is that uh, there is ambiguity of the definition. For example, people use perfect and sinless interchangeably, including righteous, blameless, uh, upright and also uh, many other uh, many other synonyms. Now, if you mix them all up, you're gonna be confused. Which one is which? Now, so I took the path, the thought path of disambiguating uh, the terms. The most uh, <laughs> most hated verse is when Jesus says, be ye therefore perfect. Now, people start to become uncomfortable. They want to replace perfect with uh, mature. They want to replace perfect with uh, love, with uh, mercy, with uh, perfect in love, with Christian perfection, and with sinless perfection and sinlessness. So, <clears throat> if you look at the uh, Bible and the spirit of prophecy, and you look at them like all the same, it's uh, really inconclusive. You will just debate and debate and debate. So, instead of defining, we will define it on the use, on the description. So, uh, our definition depends on the data, yeah? How, how does the dictionary, how is the dictionary formed? They go interview people and ask what the meaning is. So we're going to go around the Bible and the spirit of prophecy trying to see if sinlessness is exactly the same as perfection. Now I want to summarize that my findings is that perfection is not equal to sinlessness but sinlessness is perfection however perfection is not necessarily sinlessness yet why because of the data yeah we just look at the data for example so this is how i reached that uh that uh, this understanding. Uh, for example, we all know that only Christ, the sinless one. So there are two 
groups. The pro-perfection and the anti-perfection. The anti-perfection says, okay, you cannot be perfect because only Christ was the only sinless one. Okay, okay, that is true. But that is not perfection, it is sinlessness. The reason I'm disambiguating between perfection and sinlessness is that if you look at all the sinless, you can see that you cannot claim it, you cannot know it, you will only be sure when you stand in the judgment, when we are glorified. But if you look at perfection, Jesus says, Be ye therefore perfect. And there are plenty of people in the Bible who were described as perfect. The other confusion that uh, is common is the definition of perfection. Does that mean that uh, if Noah was perfect, he did not see, he he will not sin again? So it's another confusion. So Noah was perfect, but when he sinned. He is not perfect anymore. If he repents, he per he is perfect again. Another example is uh, John the Baptist, uh, father and mother. They were perfect, but because of his doubt, he became he was punished. He became dumb until John the Baptist was born. So that's the punishment. When he was dumb, he was not perfect, but previously he was perfect. So. Uh, Perfect people can become imperfect. Example, Adam. Example, Lucifer. Example, one-third of the angels. Example, okay, those are the pre-fall, previously perfect beings who became imperfect because of their choice. Post-fall people who became perfect because of their or who became imperfect, sorry. So uh, Lucifer, Adam, and one third of the angels pre fall because of choice lost perfection. Uh, Enoch, Moses, and Elijah. They are all glorified. They were sinners before. They had sin. He, now they are sinless. Glorified. They are already glorified. Shortcut. So how did, how did Moses, Enoch, and Elijah, who are postful nature, become sinless now and perfect? Perfect before, now that they are glorified, sinless already. So it's just uh, simply repentance grace and faith and uh, so on so let's look at the data see christ was the only sinless of course unfallen angels were also sinless and unfallen worlds ellen white says christ uh, he left the unfallen worlds and unfallen angels wanted to be sacrificed but they are not enough Okay, now let's go to can be sinless. Yeah, when can we can we be sinless? How can is it possible to be sinless? I was confused here before because the element of time I did not ask. When I found this, I said, "Oh, sinlessness and perfection are the same," but I forgot to ask when. When the question is when. So let's look. Can who can be sinless? Yeah, the when is here. When we stand before God, okay. Who so those who obey all of the commandments will will reach the condition of sinlessness. He bore our sins that we might stand before God in the row of sinlessness. Okay. So that looks like uh, and after the judgment day. Furthermore, it says here, we cannot say I am sinless till this vile body is changed. So we cannot say I am sinless until glorification. Furthermore, when the conflict is ended, then and then only 
when we are glorified, will it be safe to say that we are saved and sinless? Okay, when uh, we are sure that the glorification phrase. Now let's look at the usage in the Bible of the word perfect. Take note, if he, Job was perfect, Lucifer was perfect. He was per created perfect. Of course, now he is not perfect anymore. So perfection is a point of time. I got this probably from Dr. Habian. It is a point of time. Meaning, the Bible gives us a clue that all of these perfect people, except for the Heavenly Father and Jesus, they uh, one, were once perfect. Some of them did not repent. They are not perfect. But some of them died already, repented. They were perfect. They were perfect. The Bible says, Noah, he got drunk. Of course, he re repent and he become perfect again. So Adam ate wrong fruit, not perfect anymore, repented. And Ellen White says he will be there in the in heaven. One third of the angels, because they believe the wrong prophet, they believe Lucifer and Zacharias and Elizabeth. He, they were blameless, both of them. But because of doubt, he, they were not perfect when he was dumb. Jesus is always perfect. Heavenly Father is always perfect because they are God. And the example is very contextual. Our perfection is us, our Father in heaven. Yeah. Okay. Became perfect, Moses, Elijah, and Enoch. They were post-fall, but they can become perfect by re, uh, repentance, grace, faith, etc. So others predicted who will be saved. For example, in the Bible, we have the thief on the cross. Jesus said, you will be with me in paradise. David, uh, there's a verse that says he is sleeping, but he will rise up later. Abraham, of course, the father of faith, and as apostles, those martyrs <clears throat> who will say, uh, say that they will be judging the tribes, will have 12 thrones. Okay, can become perfect. Anyone can become perfect. How? Because why? Because of the examples above. Moses, example, Elijah, example, Enoch, example. Because repentance, grace, faith, obedience, these are available to us. No need for human nature, of unfallen nature. So even if you are fallen, post-fall nature, it's still possible to become perfect because there is example. Even if you are pre-fall nature, it is still possible to become imperfect when you decide to sin. Like anyone, like Adam, Lucifer, and one-third of the angels. Okay, now the question is, when to be perfect? I used to think that uh, this is the issue, uh, my friends. When, when will be, we'll know, or we claim, or we know to be sinless? That is, on the judgment day. But when to be perfect? Okay, it is now. Because we don't know the close of probation. The deadline is the close of probation, not the second coming and not the judgment day. The final judgment, executive judgment. So it says here, now, while the precious Savior is making an atonement for us, we should seek to become perfect in Christ. Of course, some people will say, you cannot do it yourself. So of course, everything that you can do, it is because of God's grace because he lives in us, because he wills to do his good pleasure in us, and gives us power and the Holy Spirit to repent. The Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul, and the goodness of God brings us to repentance. But no matter what God does, if we do not... Uh, choose to accept his gift of salvation, he cannot save us. 
So we have our part. There is effort. Cannot just uh, be lazy and not do anything and be safe. Okay. How usually? So there is a difference between perfection and sinlessness. Sinless, especially the time. Sinless is in glorification, but perfection is now. The problem with the anti perfection belief, these people. <clears throat> I think these are the people who don't want to keep the Sabbath. If you read their books, you will think like them. So when the perfect idea comes, they start to become in uh, itchy, itchy ears. And they want to change the topic. I noticed this. When the word perfect, be ye therefore perfect, now they start to complain. Can you be sinless? Do you know that Jesus is the only sinless? It's very confusing if we synonymize perfection and sinlessness. They have different deadlines. Perfection is now, sinless is glorification. Why? How did we say? Because that's what the usage is. So sinless perfection they want to change the topic to sinless perfection. But it's a different topic. Sinless perfection is glorification. But perfect is now. Because they know that it is on the judgment day. But imagine they are saying that perfection judgment is in the judgment day. No. Perfection deadline, perfection deadline is second coming. <clears throat> no. Perfection deadline is now until the close of probation. Or your personal close of probation <clears throat> and sinlessness is later yeah so imagine passing your paper on the second coming and then finding out it's a different assignment perfection should have been passed earlier in the close of probation or now until the close of probation <clears throat> and I think the people who don't want to obey the some commandments probably the sabbath and then the theologians are reading their books so they what they read is excuse ellen white says so perfect the character of god represented which men must in order so perfect is the character represented which men must have in order to obey because this that will be christ's disciples that the infidel has said that it is not possible for any human being to attain it. So this is the question of the great controversy. Can God's law be obeyed? Now, if you don't want to obey, you're going to say, change the topic to sinless perfection. Only Jesus is perfect. We cannot obey. See how the mix up is. So people who don't want to obey, they will change the topic. Or maybe some people, they are just confused because they read Baptist books more than Bible and Spirit of Prophecy. Okay. <clears throat> that's why I always, I also only stay with Bible and Spirit of Prophecy because that's what's at least in the fundamental beliefs. Okay. The nice thing about this, my friends, we don't need to edit the Bible because if jesus really meant mature when he said be therefore perfect then why don't we just change the bible to mature of course we don't want to look like we are editing the bible but every time perfect is read we want to change what people think as mature or uh, merciful or loving <clears throat> and if you look at the most of their translations it says perfect so it's be therefore perfect and i be perfect 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 you see all of these translations perfect 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 only one here like you must be always up or ah, just just up and there's one here translation which says complete <coughs> like this one 
But 95% of them agree that it is perfect. It's not mature. It's not uh, perfect love. It's just, it's not even sinless. It's just plain perfect. Okay. I think some people want to change the whole, the, all the perfect word in the Bible to mature. Anyway, I think this understanding that they are different, perfection and sinlessness, will remove the pressure of trying to replace all the perfect words in the Bible and insinuate that they used the wrong word in translation. Yeah? <laughs> 95% of translators are wrong. And you are the only one who is. <clears throat> okay, number two. We don't need to explain away. This explaining away. Explaining when Jesus said perfect, and we are explaining away. Making it less... Uh, less... Weaker, making using weaker synonyms, <clears throat> and we are explaining away the context. Let's look at the context. It is perfect love. One theologian said it is merciful. Another theologian said, but if you look at the direct context, Jesus was saying, "As your heavenly Father," the bachelor said. He wanted it to be clear that he is not referring to any other kinds of perfection, but to God, the Father's perfection. So, I don't know why you have to look at very far context when Jesus specifically says, Father in heaven's perfection. Okay, because if you understand that, you don't need to weaken the word. You don't need to find and replace the word. No need to interpret the word. Number three, <clears throat> we don't need to be confused that uh, all perfect need to be continuously perfectly understood. For example, people who were described as perfect and then they sin. Why? And then they have a question mark in your mind. So it's okay to sin. You are still perfect. Okay. So the time element was perfect doesn't mean will be perfect like Satan. You were perfect when you were created, <clears throat> but sin was found in you. You are perfect only until you sin. That's what happened to Satan. You are perfect only until you sin. Adam was perfect until he sinned. When we sin, when we repent, we become perfect again. <clears throat> Number four, it shows that the Bible doesn't contradict itself. Imagine. Jesus said, be therefore perfect, and then it contradicts all the rest of the Bible. Ellen White also doesn't contradict, because Ellen White says, Jesus is the only sinless one. But just, Ellen White says, now is the time to be perfect. So, it looks like Ellen White is contradicting him herself. Why will Jesus be the only sinless one? And then God is asking us to be perfect. Diba? How? How? I know. It looks like it's contradicting, but it's not. So this understanding that they are not exactly the same makes, uh, uh, no, makes us help resolve the seeming contradiction in Bible and in Ellen G. White writings. It shows that both Bible and Ellen G. White writings are correct. Everything. Because if you look at the perfection debate, you can look at all the pro and look at all the anti. I look at both of them and I was so confused because I made them synonyms. <clears throat> but if you look at them as different meaning, because the usage is different, you will understand that both, all of the usage are correct. Wow! <clears throat> Helps us understand that all correct the seemingly contradictions, contradictory statements regarding perfection, sinless, and the other likes. So it shows that, furthermore, my friends, it shows that perfection is accessible for all. You look at the examples. Look at the examples. And the command, 
be ye therefore perfect. So it's not God is not asking us to do impossible things. <clears throat> it is impossible via via the ano, examples. Okay, number eight. It is a perfection is possible for all. Number nine, it also takes care of the so many definitions of sin in the SDA Theology Handbook, which I'm going to open now to show you. <clears throat> Let me change uh, SDA Theology Handbook. Yeah, this one. So let me show you the definition of sin in the SDA Theology Handbook. There are so many definitions of sin here. For example, sin is a revolt. I hope you are seeing it. Sin is a revolt against God. Yeah. What else? Sin is a broken relationship. What else? Okay, let's. It's, I think it's nice to see the. Let's see the Bible verses. I wonder if you can still precise this a little bit. Okay. So there are many definitions of sin here that are, we took from the Bible. <clears throat> Sin as a rebellion, okay, that's Lucifer, of course, that is sin. Uh, okay, we know that sin as a broken relationship, of course, when you don't obey, you are in sin. The wicked are like a tossing. Okay, no problem, it's easy to understand that. Moral condition, desperately corrupt, the, the heart is corrupt and foolish sin as a state oh this is quite debating <clears throat> debatable because it's romans 7 when paul is describing himself that uh, he is not sinning but it is sin that dwells in him however the explanation of my friend sir kevin said uh, romans 7 is before he was saved romans 8 he is just Telling an example, and in Romans 8 is and when he is saved. <clears throat> okay, so another thing is specific kind of evil. Okay, uh, but the thing that is easy to understand here is anything that is not of faith is sin oh, you see it's not only the transgression of the law anything that is not of faith is sin that is sin of omission falling short of god's glory is also sin okay sin is a transgression we all know that one so we have here the the sin of omission now that is not a transgression it is a transgression maybe god has said something and then we are not doing it but the sin of uh, not of faith is sin because god commanded something and because we lack faith we did not do it. Anyway, um, there is another con controversy here, whether we are sinners because of what we did or because of our nature. <clears throat> anyway, okay, seen as a guilt of pollution. Sin as uh, neglect of duty. This is the sin of uh, omission. So, so, 
So since we do not, uh, we cannot even measure if we are in sin or not, <clears throat> because our heart is deceitful. That's why maybe it's uh, hard. You cannot claim sinlessness until the glorification. Anyway, whatever is the definition of sin, it's still compatible with the understanding that I was explaining. The understanding that uh, perfection is now and possible and God says, do. Jesus says, be ye therefore perfect. And sinlessness is in glorification. <clears throat> Not the same. Still compatible now with uh, many definitions in the SAD, SDA theology uh, handbook. Another benefit of this understanding is now it can resolve uh, many, I think one of the main uh, issues between the last generation technology, uh, the theology camp and the anti-LGT camp. Also, it also helps us understand <clears throat> and it, I think it resolves the debate for the Christ nature debate. Because the reason there is a debate about this is because does Christ have an uh, advantage? So, if you see here, now let's look at the quotes. Christ was the only sinless. Will reach. So, who, when will reach? Those who obey the commandments. He bore our sins that we may be robed in sinlessness. So, the reason I disambiguate this is to, uh, to resolve and, uh, of course, to be disambiguate. <clears throat> and to cite the danger of sinlessness, to cite the danger that there is a danger of claiming sinlessness, there is also a danger of refuting perfection. So the anti-perfection people, this is their danger. <clears throat> the pro-perfection people, this is the danger. How to be wary of both dangers and be in, uh, no, not commit both problems. Why does the Bible say Jesus is the only sinless but encourages us to be perfect? Yeah. Why does Ellen White says only Jesus is perfect but also says perfection of character is possible? How do we reconcile such statements? So we just look at the usage and define sinless or perfect depending on how it is used. <clears throat> in the Bible, affirmed by spirit of prophecy. So Jesus committed no sin, sinless, yet without sin, and in him is no sin. Of course, no, never sin, is not in sin, and will never sin. But he was made sin for us, yeah? Interesting. Okay, anyway, he must made sin for us, but he did not sin. Okay. <clears throat> we cannot claim sinless. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves. For all have sinned. Romans 1.23. So that's in the Bible. On the possibility of encouragement of perfection. Deuteronomy 13.18. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. Matthew 5.48. The most unfavorite verse by anti-perfection people. Oh, sorry, by people who received more information about against perfection than what is in the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. Those uh, theological living. Comments. <clears throat> Be ye there per perfect, therefore perfect. Genesis 6 9, Noah was a just man and perfect. Genesis 7, Abraham, be thou perfect. Job, that man was perfect. Yeah. And <clears throat> how about Ellen G. White on about Jesus' sinlessness? 
Christ was the only sinless one. He lived a sinless life, but as the sinless one, his nature recalled from evil. He became, he came to this world and took upon his sinless soul the guilt of the sinful man. Oh, this is the explanation of uh, he became sin for us. The Son of God could fully understand our greeting sin. He could make an acceptable me. Okay. And in his sinless character. Okay. By finally yielding his own sinless life to save perishing man from death. He, the sinless one, was treated as we deserve. That we, faithful and sinful, must be treated as he deserved. <clears throat> Christ, the sinless, became sin for man. And other things. How about on, how, on the unclaimability of sinlessness? Okay, this is the danger of people who like perfection. Anyway, only those far from Christ claim sinlessness. Why is it that so many claim to be holy and sinless? It is because they are far from Christ. I have never dared to claim such a thing. For the time when I was 14 years old, for the time that I was 14 years old, if I knew that the will of God was, I was willing to do it. You have never heard me say I am sinless. Those that get sight of the loveliness and exalted character of Jesus Christ, who was holy and lifted up, and his strength fills the temple, will never say it. Yet we are to meet with those that will say such things more and more. Number two, those who make bold assumptions of holiness give proof in this that they do not see themselves in the light of the law. They are not spiritually enlightened and they do not loathe every species of selfishness and pride. From their sin-stained lips fall the contradictory utterances, I am holy, I am sinless. <clears throat> I was shown, number three, that those who triumph and claim that they are sinless show in this very boasting that they are far from without same taint of sin. Number four, they who claim to be sinless are in the position of the Pharisee. Men who boast their holiness are far from God. They have not Jesus in their hearts and do not realize their own unworthiness. Number five, those who are really seeking to be perfect Christian perfection Perfection will never indulge the thought that they are sinless. Imagine, perfection, okay. Sinless, not okay. A thinking that you are sinless is not okay. So seek perfection, but not think that you are sinless. That means, it clearly means perfection and sinlessness are not exactly the same. <clears throat> Number six, taking of their sinless state, uh, talking about their sinless state and deceive, endeavoring to make their religious attainments prominent, are only deceiving their own souls by doing it. <clears throat> they will have no disposition to claim a sinless character. It is when men are separated from God, when they have very indistinct views of Christ, that they say, I am sinless. Okay. When you say I am sinless, I am sanctified, that means you are separated from God. I am holy. I am sinless. When they have not at least foundation, they don't know what they are talking about. Okay. You are holy and sinless while he is trampling on the divine law is not the voice of Jesus. Okay. Evangelism. <clears throat> They are, their assertion, assertion that they are sinless is false. Many who are filled with the greatest bitterness against the commandment-keeping people will make the loudest voice, uh, loudest boast of living holy, sinless lives. Those ministers who claim to be sinless are following imaginings. While they profane to be, profess to be sinless, they transgress the law of God. What else? Not because we are sinless, but because Jesus died to save such erring. Okay. 
So grace is not contrary to righteousness. Grace is not contrary to perfection. Jesus being the only sinless doesn't contradict Jesus saying be perfect like our heavenly father. We cannot say I am sinless till this vile body is changed. So when? When Jesus comes. Then and only then will we it be safe to claim that we are saved and sinless. <clears throat> okay. Is Ellen White encouraging perfection of character? Yes. Christ did not leave this world until he made it possible for every soul to live a life of perfect faith. It is possible. The reason Jesus came is to demonstrate for every soul to, to have the possibility to live perfect faith, obedience, and character. By his perfect obedience, he made it possible for every human being to obey God's commands. He has made it, see, it's very nice. He has made, you, you are not stressed that you are not sinless, but you know that it can, perfection is possible, as Jesus said. No contradiction. He has made it possible for them to perfect Christian character through his name. Through repentance, faith, and good works, he may perfect a righteous character and claim through the merits of Christ the privilege of the son of the son of, of the sons of God. <clears throat> Seek for a perfect character. The standard of character is uh, which Christ has made possible for us to reach. Is it possible? Yes. Christ made it possible for us to reach. When? Now. Is a perfect standard. Yet he has made it possible for us to become like him in character. If they are not transformed in character, they cannot dwell with him in the kingdom. When? The question is when? When are we going to change character? In the second coming? No, that's too late. Between close of probation and second coming, that's too late. Before close of probation, yes. How about now? Since you don't know when your personal close of probation is. <clears throat> Do you think you can perfect your character one day before close of probation? <clears throat> it's a miracle. But now is the time for our salvation. His death makes it possible for you to cease from sin and perfect a righteous character from God. Yeah, that's okay. So sinless, there they are synonyms, but they are not always the same. See? But the God of grace has enabled jesus christ after he have suffered to make you perfect to make us perfect this is the problem my friends if we say that you cannot be perfect then we are saying that we are infidel because the satan's position in the great controversy is saying that the law of god cannot be obeyed nobody can be perfect so perfect is the character represented which men must have in order to be Christ's disciples that the infidel has said it is not possible for any human being to be perfect, to attain to it. So the idea that it is impossible to be perfect is, Pastor Habian says, uh, okay, Ellen White says infidel because that is actually Satan's idea that the law cannot be obeyed. The law should be removed. Okay. I told you already I, I tried to avoid synonyms upright, holy, blameless, etc. because we want to disambiguate this 
sinless and perfection okay i don't know how to read greek and hebrew and aramaic so i just stayed with uh, english because ellen white is an english speaker <clears throat> yeah ellen white says uh, it is the lesser light and she doesn't claim infallibility only the bible is infallible but i think those other books commenting are less fallible uh, less infallible than ellen white writings <clears throat> at least ellen white is in the fundamental beliefs the bible is number one in the fundamental beliefs <clears throat> okay about calvin Ar Ar calvinistic and armenian i don't know about these things i tried to avoid commentaries because they are not yet proven. They have not uh, passed the tests of prophecy. But Ellen White says the votes in the GC session should be respected. So it, that's what I so observed and uh, help us uh, have a more logical, more logical uh, understanding of perfection and sinlessness they are perfection is now to summarize again sinlessness is later so if they don't contradict when jesus says when ellen white says only jesus was the sinless one and jesus says be ye therefore perfect they don't contradict jesus is not asking us to do impossible things let's pray Thank you, Lord, for the truth. And for a long time, it has been bothering. But uh, we, the Holy Spirit has given understanding. Thank you for the truth that is in the Bible and the spirit of prophecy that sets us free in forgiving us from all our sins. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.